Good morning. This is going to be the weekly Twin Flame reading. I apologize. I'm dealing with some allergies today. I did want to get the video done over the weekend just because my energy changed. Um, I really felt myself shift and I made some breakthroughs in um, my connection um, with my journey. And I thought now would be a great time to make a video, but I was so busy with working and stuff. And I thought, you know, when I got up this morning, now's the perfect time. It's real nice and peaceful in here. My energy is real good, so I'll be um, doing this video, and then I'll also be doing my All Signs video today, so do watch for that. If you are new to my Twin Flame videos, I do not read like everybody else does. If you are coming here to figure out what your Twin Flame is doing, thinking, feeling, saying, believing, any of that, I'm not going to do that because the focus of the Twin Flame journey is you. There is only you. And you are creating the experiences that you're having with your twin flame by where you vibrate at and what you believe to be true. So what I do with my videos and even with my signs, my zodiac signs videos, is I teach people how to align to higher vibrational situations and how to navigate whatever spiritual journey that you're on. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get started. We have the Page of Swords, the Gossip card. And I need to say, too, that I read energies. And I read the energy of the card. So if I give a personal story, tell my perspective, um, give a scenario, it's because I'm trying to describe the energy. Because energy has no language. Um, energy is of the universe. It's soul vibration. And so there is no human language for that. So the only way I can explain it sometimes is by telling a story. So if I do tell a story, do take what resonates, but however that story makes you feel, that is the energy I'm getting from the card. So when I saw this right away, I thought about um, the beginning of 2018 when my twin flame um, appeared, and I say appeared, to leave me for somebody else. And the reason why I say appeared is because we are creating all these experiences in our head. That's the reason why I'm always telling people, clear your thoughts. Feel what you're going to feel, but clear your thoughts. Unless your thoughts involve something like, my twin flame loves me. My twin flame wants to be with me. You know, tell yourself that and believe that. And and don't believe anything that you see because anything that you see or hear is not true. It's all a 3D illusion. But anyway, when he appeared to leave me for somebody else, I know I was stalking social media pages. I was inquiring um, from mutual friends of ours, what's he doing, what's going on, um, to where they finally got tired of it and cut me off. <laughs> But, you know, whenever you go looking for that kind of thing, guess what? You're going to get exactly what it is that you came for. And not just that, but you're anchoring the situation in. This situation stayed around for four months when I could have cleared it almost instantly by thinking about something else. By thinking about the fact that he did love me. He did want to, to be with me, but my fears were pushing him away. And I was creating this whole illusion. I even created the woman. And then I believed everything that I saw and everything that I heard. And it wasn't true. You know, my thing was a mutual friend came and told me that he was seeing somebody. And I got very angry with that person. I've, I've not spoke to her since. <laughs> so be very careful. Being the one to tell somebody bad news. I'm just saying because I still feel a way. I'm still working on that, but, you know, it was my thing was the energy behind it. You know, she just seemed too eager to tell me. I didn't like it. But once again, we do create our situations. We do create any type of re uh, physical relating experience we have with our twin flame. And until you realize that, you're going to keep spinning your wheels. To clarify that, we have, the story only seems one-sided. There's no such thing as a happy ending. Find your future in the past. The story only seems one-sided. Okay, what I'm getting from this card 
is that definitely does clarify that gossip. Because like I said, look at it like this. If you don't resonate with anything else in this video today, resonate with the fact that whatever you believe to be true is true. If you think back to when you and your twin flame first met, it was perfect, it was wonderful, it was blissful. You were like, wow, this is the most amazing time of my life. And then all of a sudden you started finding faults. I know mine uh, kept morphing into my exes. <laughs> Every ex I had, he morphed into it. I'm like, how can this be? But that was my fears playing out. And so if you look back at like different triggers that you had, and also, I look at the physical relating experiences with the twin flame when they come in. It's the physical form of the twin flame. Because your twin flame is not actually even that physical form. Your twin flame is actually your own shadow side. So if I know, I know you like to think this is the love of your life and he or she is just going to come in your life and just make you oh so happy and you're going to live this fairy tale life and that's what you've heard in these twin flame groups and then you have these so-called celebrity twin flame couples who are parading around and you know make it look so easy understand there's lots of programs in this matrix to make you really go deep and really um, check your own intuition so don't believe everything that you see or hear and that also goes along with this gossip too um, and if you watch my last twin flame video and I went more into depth than that, I'm not going to go more into that again, but the reason why it's one sided is because your twin flame or the physical form of your twin flame is not even conscious and they're not even doing anything. I mean, the whole time, you know, they're doing exactly what they say they're doing. They're working, they're coming home, they're studying, you know, they're thinking or what, are, you know, watching TV, whatever it is that they're doing. And they're not doing all of the things that you think that they are. This is all in your head. These are all the illusions you, you're create, creating with your imagination. And so the best way to navigate this twin flame journey is to just be neutral. Until you clear your fears, just be neutral. Stay out of your head altogether with regards to the twin flame. Just stay out of your head and just focus on what you feel. If you feel something, honor it. But until you clear your fears, just stay neutral. Keep a neutral playing field <laughs> because otherwise you're going to keep creating situations. There's no such thing as a happy ending. Well, the other message that I'm getting with this is that you will never have the same experience again with your twin flame as you had in the beginning because it was fear-based. It was all passion and butterflies and electricity and um, nervousness. And, you know, you had your twin flame so high up on the pedestal. But you'll never have that again because if you're doing your inner work and working with your spirit team, and this does not involve, I tell people all the time, if you want to know what it is that you need to work on, you need to be connecting to your spiritual guidance and staying out of these groups and off Google, asking Google, because you will get all kinds of false information and even whatever I'm telling you do take what resonates. So this happy ending, it's not going to look the way you think it is. It's more of an inner peace. It's more of an inner union because this journey is not about romance at all it's about coming into um, your own soul it's about blending the yin and the yang of your soul and your twin flame the physical form of your twin flame who's basically just an avatar is just there to show you what you need to work on and you are blending your shadow side now can you have a physical relationship with your twin flame yes but it's not going to look like you think it is it's going to be more of a virtual experience and it's not for everyone some people want that 3d uh, physical um, fear-based you know regular rules restrictive relationship they don't want something that's that freeing and um, that fluid as a twin flame connection and that's all right there's no judgment 
find your future in the past. Well, for one thing, I am one of these people that's very focused on the now. If you've never listened to The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle, he says that the power is in the now. Um, anytime that you feel sad, it's because you're focused on the future. And anytime you feel anxious, it's because all right, sad is the past, anxious is the future. So you have to remain in the now, in the current moment. I know I got anxious this morning and was stressing about some stuff. And I asked my team, how do I release this anxiety? Because they were like, you're going to worry yourself to death. By being present, focus on the moment right in front of you right now. That's how you avoid being anxious. And trust. King of Pentacles, trust. It took forever to clarify those two cards. It's going to be a real long video. <laughs> uh, with this trust card, this is all about having faith. And don't push your energy out in pursuit of anything outside of yourself. You have everything you need within. And let whatever is for you come to you. Don't chase it. Just have faith that whatever's happening right now is happening just like it's supposed to. So let's say it, you know, your twin flame contacts you and says, Hey, you know, um, I'm involved with somebody right now or whatever, you know, be like, okay, don't focus on it and know that whatever's happening is preparing you for what's next and look at it as a test. And besides, this is something that you attracted anyway, so do look at whatever it is showing you. It's definitely a fear. Once you realize your fears are not real, you'll be able to navigate this with ease. Because to clarify that card, we have the Envy card. So I am feeling like this has been a problem for you that, you know, your twin flame. And, you know, it happens to all of us because what happens is once we go chasing our twin flame, Guess what? They run off with other people, um, substances, any type of toxic situations, um, substance abuse. I know mine had an issue with that, with other women, or so it seemed. So it seemed. Because understand, whatever the twin physical form of the twin flame is doing, it's more like we're the puppet master and they're the puppet. And they just respond to our energy. So if you stop pushing, they'll start pulling away to those things. And how do you stop pushing? By going into this place of deep faith and knowing that you cannot lose this person for one thing. Because it's you. How do you lose yourself? And if you have lost them, you need to look at it because somehow you've lost pieces of yourself somehow and you need to reclaim them. But know that you can't lose them. And that whatever is for you by divine right, you will have and stop pushing. And once you stop pushing, watch what happens. It's all energy. This is this is a journey of the soul, and it's all energy work, all of it. Death and transformation. This is that honeymoon period that you had with your twin flame, that it died. And I know I spent the longest time, probably about a year and a half, chasing, chasing it. It was like a Jones for me. You know, and I've heard people say that when you use crack, cocaine, um, that you're always, you know, any drug, for instance, any drug, you're always chasing that initial high that you had. And you can never get it back, so you have to use more, and you have to use more, and you have to use more. Well, on this journey, the physical form of the twin flame is the Jones. And so you're always thirsty for and always addicted to and trying to get more and more and more of them and trying to get back to that initial feeling that they gave you. But see, the very fact that you are trying to get something from them, you're trying to get that feeling back that they gave you, that is placing conditions on them. That is not love. That is an addiction. It is codependency and that is what you need to work on. And they're showing you this. So this had to die in order for you to start working on something new, a higher vibrational connection. And you will never have that what you had in the beginning, so stop chasing it. It's going to look different. When it comes back to you, when you are balanced and you are ready, it's going to look different. But you're going to be balanced and ready, and it will resonate with you. 
That is if you are doing your inner work, working with your guides. And, you know, a lot of times we get in this funk where we want to sit up and we want to complain and we want to gossip. We want to talk about our twin flame connection. Stop talking about it to people. They don't understand it. And even if you have other people who are like so-called on a twin flame journey that you're talking to, your journey isn't going to look like theirs. And a lot of times people get scared and they're in an, their own ego-based energy and um, they discourage you. So do really just stop talking about it. Just stop. Go inward and focus on what you need to work on. To clarify that card, we have the Caring Connections card. And this is what I was talking about. Um, it's going to be different when it comes back around. It's going to be without fears. There aren't going to be fears or rules or restrictions. There cannot be in order for you to be in a physical relationship with your twin flame. There cannot be any rules or restrictions whatsoever because even when you come back together, you've still got to stay balanced. You know, let's say you get in, you know, you're, you're together. Let's say, you know, you've been living together six months and, you know, all of a sudden, you know, a fear pops up and they appear to leave again or they appear to be doing something that, you know, they pull away or they appear to be doing something um, maybe, I don't know, like with somebody else or talking to somebody else or you get scared they're going to leave you and before you know it, it looks like they are and you have to really kind of not focus on it. If you have manifested a fear, the key is to not focus on it because it's not real. And then watch it move, watch it shift. Because have, have you been in a situation, had a physical situation with your twin flame where they were telling you they didn't know what the hell you were talking about? <laughs> I know I had that happen. And, you know, or, you know, he kept telling me, oh, you've got a faithful, uh, you've got a good man. Oh, you've got a real good man, a faithful man. And I was thinking, what the hell? <laughs> Go on with someone with that shit. <laughs> but it was true. It was my fears that were getting in the way of this caring connection. The twin flame connection is one of the hardest connections there are because it is a virtual connection. Why is it a virtual connection? Because you're dealing with yourself. They are the yin to your yang. They are your shadow side. They are showing you parts of yourself that you have denied. And their physical form, and like I said, is merely an avatar that you were attracted to to start this journey of ascension. This is the first step of your ascension. And this started you spiritually awakening. You probably never even watched tarot card readings on YouTube until you were on a twin flame journey. I know I didn't, but I was open to it. So that's what I'm saying. And no, they are not aware of, they're aware that it is a very, very deep, soulful connection. But they're not sitting up watching YouTube videos. And they are, we are the ones, if you're watching this video, you are the one doing all of the work for both of you. And I know it seems unfair, but there's a reason for it. Nine of Wands, this is the defense card. And so this is what I was getting earlier with that whole um, trying so hard to hold on to what you had before. This is that defense mode. I want to hold on to it. I don't want anyone else to have my twin flame. Well, you know what? Let them go. Or the illusion of them. <laughs> or their avatar. Let them go. And let them come back to you and spend this time focused on yourself and learn how to be fearless and not to be scared to lose anybody or anything because there's so much power in that but you've got to be willing to let go and to detach from things and from people and circumstances and this involves you when you're in this energy here that reflects on your self-confidence because if you were self-confident and you knew what you brought to the table, you would not worry about losing anybody. 
Because even if they appeared to leave, you'd know they were going to come back anyway. Especially if they're for you. You know, if this person isn't for you, you'll know if they're not your twin flame because they won't come back. That's how you know. You can't lose your twin flame because it is you. And to clarify that card, we have, I let go of the shadow of the past by seeing someone for the first time with the eyes of love. Now, how do you show love to your twin flame? By loving yourself. When you focus your attention, your energy on yourself, guess what? They will stop pulling away and stop focusing on everything and anything other than you. They will start focusing on you because they are you. So definitely let go of everything that's happened so far and forgive because like I said, there's more than one side. There's The story seems one-sided and it really is. In this particular situation, the story is just one-sided because they're completely oblivious. I know when I got back together with, you know, my twin flame, um, he didn't even seem to know everything that had happened. He didn't even, it was like it never happened. And, you know, some of that has to do with timeline shifting, and I've talked some about timelines. Um, as we clear stuff and as we raise our vibrations, we move up the timelines. And so a lot of the shit that seemed to happen happened on lower timelines and it no longer even exists. So that's another way that we shift. But by seeing someone for the first time through the eyes of love, with the eyes of love, you have to really learn what love is. And love is not this. Love is not being jealous. It is not holding on so tightly to someone because you're scared you're going to lose them. It's being fluid and it's having trust and faith. All right, we have the Two of Cups, the partnership card. And I know if I were a, more, sorry if you hear my dog, if I were more of a physical um, circumstance um, tarot card reader, I would be like, okay, we've got the Two of Cups. Clarified by the wedding card, this situation involves a wedding. And then you would be like, oh, wow, we're going to get married. My twin flame's coming back to me. And you would get all excited about it. And guess what? They'll pull away again. Because you know what? You are expecting something from them. And that is not being unconditionally loving. So the way I'm going to interpret these cards is that this is an inner union of your soul. This is that inner marriage of that yin and that yang, of that shadow and that light side coming together. Because that is the key. That is what this whole journey is about. It's not a fairy tale. It's not a romantic journey whatsoever. Now, romance is the icing on the cake if you decide to have that type of connection. But understand, you have to always stay balanced. And... Your soul is not going to let you leave this journey anyway. Even if you say, oh, fuck it, I'm sick of my twin flame, I'm going to walk away. You can't walk away from yourself. You're going to still have to do this work, even if you're with somebody else. Because it involves coming together with your own soul. And by facing all of those shadow aspects that your twin flame is showing you, that is their job. That is what they're there for. We have the Six of Pentacles, generosity. And I know when I was going through my codependency with my twin flame, which I have cleared mostly for, I think I have just a small fragment left to work on, I would overgive out of fear of loss. It was this whole defense mode. Well, you know what? I'm going to give him my all. I'm going to do everything for him so that he will not leave me for somebody else. Or, you know, whatever it is your fear is. Whatever it is that you are overgiving, what area it is um, to compensate for whatever fear that you have, do take a good long look at that because Spirit is saying that this is a major block for you right now. And that a lot of times we focus on the physical form of our twin flame to avoid looking at ourselves. And then we blame them. Oh, they just treat me so bad or whatever. Well, for one thing, you don't have any personal boundaries when you're doing this. And the key is to put yourself first. So if you have to choose between you and your twin flame, always choose you. Doing what's best for you. 
we have the river, the movement card, and I know um, one of the first messages that I got when my twin flame appeared to leave me for somebody else for four months was to go with the flow like the river. And this is such a beautiful card that this came up in this reading. Go with the flow. Just whatever happens, just go with it. Just flow with it. And once you learn to be fearless, oh, um, you know, your twin flame seems to have ghosted you. Okay, well, you know what? This must mean that um, my soul is giving me the gift of space so that I can do this energy work that I need to do. Oh, my twin flame I um, is seeing somebody else once again this is you know space he's working on him or she's working on her and i'm working on me and everybody's just fine and i'm not worried about it because i know that we'll be together eventually or not and either way i'm going to be all right because i'm balancing myself and this is about me and it's not about anybody else and i am my twin flame and we're always together in the fifth dimension orchestrating all this anyway so who cares that's the energy you got to get to and I don't read the little negative connotations. Um, sometimes I do. It says, this book pres presages the discovery of a mystery affecting the person for the better. <clears throat> I, I take this book as um, the, the book of knowledge, the book of souls, the Akashic records that hold the blueprint, the DNA, all of the ancient history of the soul that you are and all that you've ever been. And because as souls, we have had so many other experiences, and I call these timelines, and they're happening all at the same time simultaneously. So that's the reason why I said don't focus too much on where you're at right now because, you know, in the higher dimensions, you and your twin flame are together. You just have to align to it. And a lot of the past timelines twin flames were not meant to be together. We were merely just experiencing different things that we wanted to experience. Um, I know a lot of us, you know, experienced slavery. We experienced the Holocaust. And we did this with our twin flames. Um, but we all had different roles, us and our soul family. And these were learning experiences. But, you know, the timelines that we're on now we're supposed to come together. Um, it's time, and it's time to remember all that we've been. And so do pay attention to your dreams. Write them down. Um, any type of deja vu moments, any type of signs or synchronicities that you're getting, it's letting you know about your past existences. We have the sky, and this sky to me is all about cutting away things that no longer resonate. So as you proceed on this journey, you may realize that things that you thought you liked or things that um, you thought you liked to do, or even your job or your living arrangement, anything just no longer resonates with you. And that is perfectly all right too, because this is about returning to your soul and stripping off all of that conditioning, all those fears and that ego-based energy. Balancing it, stripping away what is no longer you. And I got this wealthy man card. And it's funny because, like, I've been struggling a lot financially over, like, the past five months. And I know there are so many times I just wanted him to just ride up on his horse and just take me away from it all. You know, just come fix it. Just come save me. This, this is the come save me card. But you know what? You have to save yourself. I, I know what I have been through over the past couple weeks is that... I'm like, in the save me energy, just come save me. Why can't you at least act like you are concerned with what I'm going through? I mean, I have cried so many tears. Like, at least act like you care. But you know what I had to do? I had to give this to myself. I had to be like, you know what? I am going to stand on my own two feet. And I'm going to do this myself. And I'm going to comfort and console myself. And you know what? Here he comes, comforting and consoling me now. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about it too much, though, because I'm trying to stay balanced, and that's what this is all about, and, you know, a lot of times when they do come back in, if you're in one of those in-and-out type of situations, connections that I have been in, 
we get all excited. Oh, they're back again. And, you know, this is wonderful. And I could be happy again. And there they go. Because you're putting too much focus on them. So it's really just what I call a fallback energy. Just fall back. All right, we have this postcard oracle card. It says, all your prayers, dearest you, all your prayers are heard and mirrored back to you from the unseen realms. Be grateful, praise things before they manifest, and always ask for the highest good. When you plead and beg, they will bring you only more reasons to plead and beg. Instead, offer your prayers as sacred gifts as a testament to your faith in a higher power. Open up and let spirit move through you and comfort you. Add meditation as a way to become empty so you'll be ready to be filled with inspired epiphanies, peace, understanding, and joy. In this moment, your prayers are being answered for the highest good of both you and all life. Sometimes what you pray for is not supposed to happen for you, and your prayers will be answered in surprising ways. At this moment, we're listening intensely to your prayers and want you to know that your highest good is our priority all as well. Somebody got that card last week. I don't know if it was the Twin Flame reading or not. But ask for divine ask for divine selection and the highest possible outcome in everything. That way, when it comes to you, you know that it's really yours and that it's really the best for you because you deserve the best. And, you know, there might even come a time, believe it or not, that, you know, you choose a soulmate over your Twin Flame just because, like I said, you want a regular relationship. But you still have to balance your energy first. I'm sorry, the helicopter's going overhead. <laughs> well, if you would like to have a personal twin flame reading with me, I will let you know what is blocking you right now, uh, what is going on in your connection. Um, and these are $40 right now, and you can do that through Cash App or PayPal. Or if you'd like to make an energy donation, you can do that as well, and I'll include all that in the description of the video. Thank you for watching.